This video is going to go over how you get diseases, who can cure diseases, where you get diseases from, and exactly which diseases should take priority over others, depending on your play style. The main ways you're going to contract a disease in this game are from enemy attacks, curios, and the end of dungeon. The calculation used at the end of the dungeon is once again another percentage based one, however this one is not based at all on stress level or any of that, it's obviously based on your disease resistance. So that arbitrary stat you think is arbitrary actually does calculate at least once a dungeon. It's a small note, but it's still a small one. You have to be at least resolve 2 to finally be getting diseases at the end of the dungeons, and also heroes can only have 3 diseases at most. The formula is 32% minus 33% times disease resistance. And this will always have a minimum chance of 5%, which is, I think, a little high, but it's okay. It's still 1 out of 20, which means maybe every 5 dungeons you might get an individual or 2, if, it, if you have all 5% chances, obviously. For an example calculation, we're going to take the Plague Doctor, who is the best at disease resisting, and then we're going to take the worst person, who is sadly a couple of people, about 5, which are the Leper, Jester, Bounty Hunter, Anticorium, and Abomination. They all have 20%. So if we put 20% into this calculation, which is now 0.32 minus 0.33 times 0.2, we get, we get about 25% chance, which is pretty high. That's a quarter, which means you're probably going to get one individual a disease most likely, and it's actually not going to get incredibly higher if we use the Plague Doctor, who has a natural disease resist of 50% or 0.5. So if we do 0.32 minus parentheses 0.33 times 0.5, we will get about a 16% chance, or 0.155. Plague Doctor has a 30% better natural based disease resistance, but it really only offers a 10% better chance at the end of the dungeon. Now there are other ways we can get diseases, and we're going to take a quick look at those now, so you can be aware. These can be both enemies and curios, so be very careful of which ones you interact with, and maybe prioritize ones you don't want to get. Thankfully, the wiki has all the ones here and what you can and cannot get from certain ones. So we're going to start off with our favorite friend, the ghoul. It's a 5% chance just outright, and this does work on the ability Howl, even though it doesn't do any damage, because I usually get the worries from Howl, actually, because technically, if you add that up, there's a 20% chance if it hits all four people that, you know, there's a 20% chance the disease will occur. Obviously 5% per individual, but 5 individuals will make 20%. So if you get hit with 2 howls, you're looking at a 40% chance to get a disease, and if you've ever fought a ghoul in champion on level dungeons, you understand how easily a ghoul can go twice, and also hit your whole party with howl twice. We have maggots who can grave nibble, 15% is actually pretty high. Now the thing is, they die most times, so probably not going to happen, but just let you know, it is 1 out of 8, so you want to be very careful. Swine wretches are... Something I always try to choose to obliterate first if possible, I usually do, but they do have high speed and dodge, that's a separate issue. They have a 33% chance and they can give you any disease. Going back to the ghoul maggot, it's any and the worries for the ghoul. The worries is pretty brutal, I believe that's just a flat 30, 20-30% to 30 stress increase. It's pretty darn strong, we'll look at that slightly later in this video. Carrion Eater is very interesting, it will give you any disease, and it increases 2% from the 7% from Veteran if you're in Champion. So 7% for Veteran, 9% for Champion, pretty good but not the worst. Fungal Artillery is a 15%, that's not terrible, but once again you don't want to allow those live too long as well. And that ability is Reign of Blight, and it does have other skills, so you won't get one if they mark. Rabid Nasher. We have a Rapid Rush, Rabies, 10%. We'll talk about Rabies. I talked about Rabies in my Quirk video because my brilliant mind thought Rabies was a Quirk for some reason. It is indeed a disease. I will not go as in-depth as I did in the Quirk video, but I will still at least give my somewhat thoughts on that. Crone, Defected Sensor. Once again, any disease, 7% Veteran, 9% Champion. Not too bad. A C Maggot, well, it's the Prime ability, which I believe is also one of the only abilities of the C Maggot. It's just a flat 8%. It's one of those things where C Maggots are usually one of the last things I try to kill, so they might actually eventually get you in the cove after a couple of runs. So, it's whatever. Then you have a Deep Stinger, where they're Salty Gouge and Shocker, which are the only two abilities to have. Both can do any, and they are also both just 6. So pretty much any attack, any disease, 6%, not terrible. Then we have the Shrieker with Regurgitate. 
any disease, 15%, and then finally we get to the things from the stars. Phase Null, Sky Taint, 25% on champion level, I've gotten that multiple times from that boss, pretty annoying. The curios are obviously if you decide to not activate them with their proper item or if they don't require a proper item and their whole thing is percent based chance. So for a decorative urn we have 7.4% chance for creeping cough and then almost a 4% chance for anything else. Iron Maiden, tetanus is pretty high up at 13.3 I like that. Yeah I like the fact that tetanus isn't the Iron Maiden anyways. But and he's also 7% so you figured you have like a 20% chance of disease there but it is significantly more skewed towards tetanus so you want to think about that dinner cart 25 percent chance any makeshift dining table 25 percent chance any i guess that makes sense pile of bones any 25 percent i guess they're pretty gross and nasty you don't want to go rummaging through old bones beast carcass rabies 28 percent pretty much 29 percent that's pretty high it's rabies so maybe if you want a good way to get rabies just touch a lot of beast carcasses it's up to you i will not judge Shallow Graves, a 50% for any. You probably don't want to be going through Shallow Graves without the, the uh, proper item for that curio, because that's pretty much a guaranteed disease right there. The Bass Relief, any, 8%, not that much. However, I usually don't touch those anyways. Then we got the Brackish Tide Pools, any, 25%. And then we have Fish Carcass, who gives just exclusively the Red Plague for 167 and we will go look at that later. Most of these curio diseases probably will only hurt you in the beginning of the game if you refuse to look up anything. It's just fun to know which ones do what. I guess if you're looking to maybe rabies farm, you can go touch beast carcasses, or if you just want to know what happens in general. But for the most part, if you use the proper item, you will never run into this issue with most curios. And before we go on, it would be a real shame if we don't talk about how the heck you get rid of diseases once you acquire them. There's two main ways to do it. There's camping skills and obviously the sanitarium. I'm not going to talk about the sanitarium too much because that's pretty much the obvious way. You can increase it with bust and obviously the crest. It is the first thing to reach three spots, so you'll usually have enough room for diseased individuals. However, if you don't want to take time to put someone in a sanitarium, or you don't have enough money, which is going to be a huge issue in the early game, there are two characters who can remove disease on their self or other people. That is the Grave Robber and the Plague Doctor. Both of those characters are capable of removing diseases on other people. But I'm also going to throw in the Fledgling can remove disease on self, but only on self. Plague Doctor can do it on their self as well as other individuals. Therefore, in early game, if you want to keep on moving, just pick a Plague Doctor or a Grave Robber and they can take a care of a disease for you. We're going to go over what the diseases do and maybe priority if you don't have a lot of money where not a lot of spaces, but maybe three to four diseases. Bad humors. Minus 20% max HP. That pretty much needs to go. Minus 20% HP at any point in the game is pretty devastating. You can still take people in and then campfire, take care of this if you want. I usually try to put someone into the sanitarium and move on. However, if money's tight, once again, play doctor or grave robber. Black Plague is immediately has to go and here's why obviously there's 75 percent blight resist 75 percent disease resist minus 10 percent hp which is half of bad humors and minus five speed that's just all around terrible for whomever is going to have this disease it's an immediate removal you can feel free to always take them in but i would i would remove black plague as a priority almost every time because here's also the additional problem with Black Plague. Since it minuses 75% disease resistance, it's actually going to increase their chance of getting a disease at the end of the dungeon as well. Thus, it's going to be a compounding problem. It needs to go away right away. Bulimic is one you can kind of get away with. Minus 20% healing skills while camping. It's really only harmful if you go camp. So you can let this one sit for a while if you just want to do short dungeons or it's actually not even that brutal if it's on someone who has bad healing skills at the camp as well. So this is actually all said and done. Not too bad. Bulimic can definitely wait to be taking off. Creeping Cough. Minus 20% damage. Obviously damage dealers. Absolute no no. Must go away. However you have someone like a Vestal or an Occultist who's not doing damage. Eh. Think about it, consider it. It can stay on if there's someone with like the Black Plague or something that it needs to be removed. Ennui, minus 25% virtue chance. Once again, if you're only really looking to virtue cheese, this is another one you can probably leave on. Just be more cautious with that individual. Obviously, you don't want their stress getting very high because it's going to be an immediate affliction. Grey Rot, this is Colors of Madness DLC, which is that little thing 
means right beside the name. Plus 20% max HP, minus 10 accuracy, minus 10% damage. This actual isn't terrible and can wait depending on who it's on. Once again, something that comes to my mind immediately is a Vestal. She may not be doing a lot of damage, and if she's just healing, the 20% max HP actually might help her as well, so it's just an interesting thing she has. However, I would still remove that pretty quick, because the minus accuracy, you do want to stun with her, and taking off 10 accuracy is pretty brutal to get an additional, like, 6 health or 8 health. Hemophilia. Hemophilia, it's another one's a mild inconvenience, 50% bleed resistance. Most likely they're going to bleed if they get hit. However, if you have bandages and healing skills, you can heal through that. They just might burn through a little more money with all the bandages, but it's not something you have to rush take off. Hysterical blindness. Minus 20 accuracy if stress is above 70. That's one of those other ones. If you're pretty good at the game, you can flirt around with this and leave it on. If you have the rooms and the sanitarium for it and you don't need that hero for the week, I would just take it off. But as I said, if we're thinking real early game, you have one spot and it's between this and another really terrible disease such as syphilis, I would probably leave hysterical blindness on and uh, remove syphilis. Lethargy, minus 4 speed, now that's actually a very interesting one because you could use this in mark strategies with Arbalest and stuff where you want them to be going last so they can definitely function off the mark so they don't outspeed anyone. Eventually you'd want to take it off, there's other ways of manufacturing lower speed while doing other good increases. If you're in the early game you like mark strategies and Lethargy happens to be on a hero you like to function off the mark, it's actually not the worst thing in the world, but once again, minus 4 speeds are pretty heavy damage there. We get the rabies again. 15% damage, minus 10 accuracy. Someone mentioned something last time and actually I won't repeat myself too much. This is actually pretty good on the Grave Wrapper, because the Grave Wrapper gets improved accuracy the more she does her one dagger attack, so she can actually get rid of the accuracy problem almost immediately after one turn, while getting that nice damage increase. So it's actually a pretty good trade-off on the Grave Wrapper, and it might be a good trade-off on someone such as the Musketeer and Arbalist as well, because they have much natural higher accuracies, but their damage can tend to be a little lower. Scurvy, the move resist and bleed resist, once again, it's... It's a low priority in my honest opinion, it's not something you have to rush to take off if you don't have the room for it. Sky Taint, this is what you can get from the things from the stars, it's plus 20% stress and then minus 20% bleed and blight. It's really that 20% stress that should prioritize in that one's removal. Spasm of Entrails is another minus 20% healing skills while camping, once again not really a huge problem. Spotted Fever is like hemophilia just but for blight, so once again. Just make sure you bring along any venoms for someone who can heal any venom, and that should be pretty significantly negated. Now, syphilis, that's a pretty bad one. I often try to remove this immediately. Minus 5 accuracy, minus 10% damage, minus 10% max HP. You really can't ignore that for long. That needs to go away pretty quick. Tapeworm, 100% food consumption, 60% chance to interact with food curios, and they steal the loot. That's a no-no. Tapeworm's gotta go. It hurts, obviously, your food, and then it can steal stuff. We don't like either of those. Not a good thing. It's gotta go. Tetanus, minus 5 accuracy, minus 5% crit. Once again, maybe not terrible on someone who's just full functioning on heals or buffing the party. I take slight issue to the crit. However, the minus 5 accuracy is pretty, uh, pretty negligible, in all honesty. The Ague, minus 10% damage, minus 3 speed, minus 10% max HP. It's a pretty brutal one. I'd put it right up there with the Black Plague and Syphilis, so this is this is one that probably has to go. The Fits, plus 3 speed, minus 5 accuracy, minus 5% crits. It's interesting. It makes you quicker. Uh, this might be good for individuals who want to do mark setups and stuff like that. Marks have such high accuracy, and they don't really rely on a crit that it could be the person who marks. And then you have someone who's lethargic who then functions off that. It'd be kind of a funny situation, but it's definitely possible. I would say this is like a medium to a low medium priority, only because once again, I don't really like losing the crit chance. However, the plus three speed is pretty helpful, and depending on what you have, you can reduce that accuracy with trinkets if you need to. The Red Plague, minus 75% bleed resist, pretty bad. Minus 10% max HP, not great, and then minus 5% crit is not good either. We mostly don't like the HP and crit. The bleed sucks, but as I said, there's things that can cure bleed and bandages, but getting that HP and crit back is not something that is so easily done sometimes. 
the runs minus 20 dodge and minus 10 percent max hp we'll put that right up in high priority minus 20 dodge that is literally what some people have as their champion level dodge so you're putting them down to zero that is just an absolute no and they also lose 10 percent max hp so not only are they always going to get hit they're going to have less health to withstand all that and that's just eh, we're not doing that the worries plus 30 percent stress this has to go away it's just a flat 30 percent stress wherever you go it's no conditions like if the torch is above 50 or if the stress level is above 80 nope just a flat 30 it's got to go if you need to use someone who has this i'd highly recommend bringing along a plague doctor or a grave robber and doing a medium dungeon where you can remove this vertigo Vampiric Spirits and Wasting Sickness, all minus 50% from either move, debuff, or disease. I'm just going to group them because they're all very similar. The other two, Vertigo and Vampiric Spirits, those can kind of wait. The debuff resist and the move resist aren't exactly terrible. However, Wasting Sickness would definitely be a medium to medium high removal because of the formula we just talked about. If you leave Wasting Sickness on and you don't take it off, you're going to increase the person's chance of getting a new disease at the end of the dungeon significantly and if you don't have a fully upgraded sanitarium yet you're going to get more diseases that you can't really remove quickly thank you so much for watching like and subscribe below